Joining me here is the ranking member on the House Armed Services Committee, Democratic Congressman Adam Smith. And Congressman, thank you for being here. And obviously, I, I should say, first and foremost, that as we talk about the story, we are wishing Secretary Austin a, a fast and complete recovery from this. Obviously, this is something that affects a lot of men, uh, not just here in the United States, but around the world. But on the, the process here and how this happened, do you believe that it's appropriate that President Biden just learned about this diagnosis and what happened on December 22nd today? Absolutely not. I mean, th this is very troubling. Let me say, I think Secretary Austin has done a great job as Secretary of Defense. When you look at the coalition that he has put together to defend Ukraine, at the response to the Israel cross crisis, we're, we're in a very, very difficult uh, set of circumstances for our national security. He's done a great job. But there's really no excuse that I can think of for not having informed the president, number one, that you had cancer, but certainly number two, that he was having the surgery and that he was hospitalized. And that's the one question that we have to have answered. What did Secretary Austin think? I mean, why did he think that it was okay not to tell the president? I mean, he, Secretary Austin's number two in command of the military. Uh, president's number one. It's really important that he keep him informed. He didn't in this case. And, and I can't imagine a, a plausible explanation that, that justifies that decision. Yeah, I think the question is how concerning it is, given the world that we're living in always, but right now, that, you know, on December 22nd, he's under general anesthesia. And just the idea uh, of what could have happened that day had there been something urgent that happened either here at home or overseas. Absolutely. I mean, we have a clear chain of command. The Secretary of Defense has clear authorities, by the way, on a number of different areas. They, you know, he has the authority to decide, you know, when to do strikes in different parts of the world. So if he's incapacitated, then, then he needs to pass that authority clearly off to somebody else. And obviously, the president, the commander in chief, needs to know who has that authority at any given time. The House Armed Services Committee Chairman Mike Rogers has launched a formal inquiry into this. They are asking for documents to understand what happened here, the communications breakdown. Is that an inquiry that you support, Congressman? Well, I don't think there's any question what happened here. I mean, at this point, it has come out, and you, you outlined it very well in your lead up to this story. We know what happened. I don't know that there's much of an inquiry or much digging that needs to be done. We just need Secretary Austin to answer the question. Why did he think that it was appropriate for him not to tell the president that all of this was going on? Um, I think we do need to hear an answer from that, and I think the president needs to evaluate his relationship with the Secretary of Defense based on what happened and based on that answer. Does that mean that you think that he should potentially consider firing him? they got to have that conversation. I don't know. Like I said, at the moment, I can't think of a plausible explanation. I, I do wow. also want to say that the Republicans, you know, I mean, they, they're going to make hay out of this, right? They're going to try to turn it in. I mean, they made, they took four years to figure out Benghazi because they wanted to sort of cause problems for Hillary Clinton more than they wanted to get answers. So what I'm trying to do is get answers and have a straightforward approach to this, not to politicize it. Um, but I think in the short term, we're going to need to hear from the president, you know, what, what was the explanation he got from Secretary Austin? Is he satisfied with that? Because I do want to circle back to two points. One, Secretary Austin's doing a great job as Secretary of Defense. Number two, this is an enormously important time in our country. And as far as the, the resignation talk is concerned, we also have to factor in that the Republicans are trying to gum up whatever the president does. And we probably wouldn't be able to appoint a new Secretary of Defense. All, all of those things need to be factored in here. Um, but that's a conversation the president and the secretary need to have. And the president needs to be, be confident in the Secretary of Defense. A sobering conversation. Congressman Adam Smith, thank you for joining tonight. Thank you, Caitlin. Appreciate the chance.